Alright, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why I think iOS is inconvenient compared to Android and more specifically compared to Samsung's version of Android One UI. I'm not trying to clown on iOS just for the fun of it and I'm not trying to, you know, make fun of anybody who uses iPhone mainly. I even use iPhones for, you know, work purposes like filming videos and editing videos. I use iPhones for content creation, but when I try to daily drive iPhones, it just feels so inconvenient and I feel so limited. So I just want to put it into a video and kind of, you know, express my thoughts a little bit more on that. So yeah, if you're an iPhone fanboy, try not to get triggered too much, but let's get into it. I had to switch iPhones because this one ran out of storage, but you might think like, oh, you're a YouTuber, that's a specific use case, but split screen and floating windows are not specific to power users. Regular people, average people can use it too, and I think it'll be beneficial more than people realize. Let's say you want to get a code from your email. You know, you're trying to log into an app and you need a code from your email, so it's sending that to your email. On iPhone, what you have to do is literally leave the app go to your email and then you'll find that code or sometimes it will pop up in a notification and you can like check it like that and even when you're accessing your notification look at how it takes over the whole screen like you could do like this i guess and you could tap and hold for it to just pop up but it still takes over the whole screen on one ui samsung yeah notifications take up the whole screen but i can grab this notification and now it's in a floating window and I see the information that I'm trying to copy and I can write it down right here. I can adjust the size of the floating window to whatever size I want and then boom, now I can type in that code all without leaving the app. So like that's one example of how floating windows could be super useful for everybody, even everyday users. Speaking about notifications, so responding to messages from your notifications, so much easier on Android. So for example, I have a Facebook message here right here. I can swipe a little bit and expand it to get like and respond. Respond, boom, boom, just like iOS, you know, it takes up the whole screen. However, when it pops up, you can also do the same thing on iOS. You know, you can tap and hold and it will do this. It will kind of take over the whole screen. It's a whole nother like kind of section. On Samsung, when you tap and hold, you can open your app into a floating window and you can move it around, respond to the message, quickly put it off to the side and close it to dismiss it. Dealing with notifications, is just so much easier on Samsung devices to me. And then also the way that notifications are just organized. Like for example, you can have notifications from the same app in multiple places, in multiple stacks, like things like that. Like personally, I don't, I don't see how that makes any sense. On Samsung devices, you can organize notifications by categories and then all the notifications from a specific app will be bunched up together and it just makes sense like that. But like I said, you can customize it. On this, you can kind of customize like, you know, the layout and the look kind of on iOS, but you can't really do too much. Like it's still gonna stack them in weird ways. So yeah, and then you also have split screen. So let's say this is just my biggest example and something that I use often, like I was literally getting frustrated using the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So trying to calculate something, trying to budget some finances, whatever. I use my phones for everything basically nowadays. So on the Samsung, I can go to my edge panel, got my calculator, and then I can grab my notes. So now I can write down different calculations, different numbers, and still have my calculator right here all at the same time. So I can put in numbers, do the, the calculation, the math, and then input the results down here very easily. Pretend this uh, banking app right here at the bottom. I can look at those numbers, directly input them into the calculator all at one time. You can adjust the size of the split screen so that it fits your needs because the calculator realistically doesn't need to be big. So now you can make the calculator smaller and still input very easily. And then if you want more space for the app in the background or you want to have two banking apps, so let's say I add another banking app, boom, now there's two banking apps in the background and my calculator is a floating window. And now I'm navigating through two banking apps and inputting the numbers into the calculator, throw it off to the side, look at the apps, bring the calculator back and and also adjust the size of the calculator, make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need. How is that not convenient? How is that not something that your average user would use? And like you might think, oh, it's advanced features. It's hard to access. It's hard to learn. It's really not. You go into your app and then two finger swipe, boom, now I'm in split screen. Now I can open up my second banking app and I can open my calculator. Or if you use the edge panel, one, open up the app you want to open. Two, open up the other app. Super simple, super easy to do. You know, you don't have to learn anything. You don't have to go into deep settings and figure out how to enable it. This is something that is just like that out of the box. Two finger swipe, split screen, edge panel, it's just all there. The only thing you might have to customize is the edge panel, like add in specific apps you want to be there in the edge panel. And then you have the ability to turn any app into a floating window. So from the top right corner, you just drag it down and then it turns it into a floating window and you can continue, let's say you're talking to someone, continue to talk to someone, push it off to the side while you're doing something else. Let's say you wanna go check your email where you're still messaging someone, you can go message them, put it off to the side, check your email. Message them, put it off to the side, check your email. Or you can leave it on the screen, you don't have to put it off to the side. You can adjust the size of it, message them, check your email, same time. You know, just like there's endless amounts of, you know, ways you can use split screen multitasking on your phone. These iPhones are more powerful than the Samsung, but they cannot do this. Make it make sense to me. How is this more convenient? 
okay so now let's get into something else so file management i love that apple added the files app i think that it's so much more convenient to use it's, it's just a necessary tool when you're dealing with like a smartphone to do different things but on the files app for iphone the biggest thing that doesn't make sense to me is that you have the files app and then you also have your photos app these two things are separate from each other like the storage on your phone is considered separate like the photos app keeps the files in a separate place so when you go to the files app you can't find that stuff on your phone that doesn't make any sense to me on samsung when you go to the files app you literally have access to all the files on your phone you know all the apps when they install stuff or they download things or they store photos in certain places you can find that stuff in the files app just like you can on a computer just like you can on max you know the computer version of this you can do that but on this iphone you can't so Say I want to find photos that are in the gallery in the files app on the Samsung. I just go to, you know, the internal storage, go to DCIM, and then boom, I can go to camera. Here's all the photos I took on the phone. And then there's also all the folders. So if I create a folder in the gallery app on the Samsung device, then I can access all those folders and find those things in the files app. And the significance of this is just the ease of being able to send this stuff somewhere else. So I can tap and hold, select multiple, now I can copy, move, share, delete. Super easy and smooth. On the iPhone, what is in the files? app is what is in the files app and let's say you just recorded a video and you want to like download it or you want to send it somewhere in order to do that like let's say you connect the ssd because this is something that apple advertises now i use this a lot with my workflow with iphones i connected the ssd to this iphone right here and i want to take this video off of the iphone this is what i'm talking about with when i say inconvenient this video right here is in the photos app and it's not in the files app so what i have to do now is i have to press share go to save the files and then i have to navigate to my ssd and what it's going to do now is it's going to download from the photos app to the ssd it just adds an extra step and sometimes the phone has to process the photo or the video that you're taking from the photos app before it can you know move it to the files app and do stuff so it just takes significantly more time on the samsung device i literally just navigate internal storage where things are stored because the gallery app is not stored in a completely separate space as the files app like like i said it's like a computer if there's things stored on device you can find that in the files app very easily so now i can go on the samsung device take these things and you can do the same stuff like iPhones like dragging and dropping stuff but I can you know select my things copy then I can navigate to the external drive and then boom just copy over it there's no going to the photos app copying from there to the external drive it's literally just one app on the Samsung device where you can find everything on the phone let's say you want to have certain photos or videos on the files app in general just for like different use cases in order to do that you literally gotta share and then save to files and even on the phone itself like let's say i choose to save it to my iphone now it just created a duplicate file of this so now i have two of the same video on this phone on the files app like it's just so inconvenient it literally does not make sense why the photos app is completely separate from the files app i should be able to access all these files within the files app because that's what it's called but when it says browse you're not really browsing the phone so now i have this i just copy this and then it's also in the photos app so that's two of the same files when they're on the same device on the same ssd built into the phone tell me how that makes sense tell me how that's convenient Okay, so the next thing I'll talk about is access to certain things. On iOS, access and settings is very inconvenient. Like you go to the settings app and there's just so much like stuff laid out. You, like it's, it's not like disorganized or it doesn't look cluttered, but like when you're trying to actually find something, you literally have to go through so many menus. And then even with apps, now they put them down here, but then certain apps are not considered apps like the camera app. But let's say you're out in the field, you know, you're using the camera, you're trying to take videos and pictures and stuff. You want to change the setting, you want to enable ProRes or something like that. If you want to change the camera setting, you can't access that from the camera itself. This is the epitome of what I mean by iOS is inconvenient. In order to change the camera settings, you got to go all the way to the settings app, then you got to find camera, and you got to go to that specific setting. On Samsung device and Android devices in general, I'm in the camera app and the gear wheel is always there. So you can just tap that gear wheel, boom, all your camera settings are here. And then this is also ties into another thing that is convenient about Android, universal back gesture. A lot of iPhone users don't understand what that means, but it means that I can go back wherever I am on the phone just by doing a gesture. So swipe like that now i'm back in the camera app. on ios people say oh yeah you know we have that it works on on ios like sure this works but it depends on the developers whereas this is universal it doesn't matter what developers do this function will always work in any app on ios you never know how the back gesture is going to work because it's not universal it's not something that's built into the phone it's just a function that like apps and developers can put into their their app so for example with LumaFusion, this is the app that i use frequently this is a menu that i went into for this video you can't swipe from the side to exit out even this like i can't i can't exit out of this i can't stop this on the samsung device regardless of what menu i'm in like i said it's universal so i can just boom now i'm back to the timeline on the iphone if i want to go back to the timeline from after entering something on LumaFusion, i literally have to go all the way to the top of the screen and go like that and you might say like oh you know you have one hand mode 
yes you do have one hand mode but one hand mode is not that convenient especially on this is the regular pro so it's a smaller size but on the pro one hand mode often activates different things it presses buttons that you don't want to press and it can mess things up like for example i, I just changed the menu that i'm in by accident and you see it's gone and like you could put it on the back tap or you could like use the action buttons for that kind of stuff but you know it's just very inconvenient to have to constantly do that to reach the top of the screen whereas on android i don't need to reach the top of the screen because i can just use my gesture to back out of whatever i'm trying to do you know i move on with my day so gesture is very 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 consistent on android way easier to use uh, a lot more one handable than you know ios Okay, so now I'm in a new note on Google Keep Notes. This is the reason why I sh I'm showing this app. It does not have that function at all. You can't swipe out of, you know, anything in this app, really. You can't, like, backswipe from here. can't go in that thing and then backswipe. When you have your keyboard up, you can't backswipe. Like, it literally just does not function, you know. And this is supposed to be a, something that iPhones can do, technically. On Android, just to emphasize and show you how it works, backswipe. It goes back to where I was, backswipe. Regardless of what app you're in, regardless of what you're doing, this back gesture works on Android devices on both sides of the screen and if you don't use gestures because on android you have the option of using the buttons at the bottom you can press the back arrow and it'll function exactly the same so universal back gesture is something that you know i love on android and and to take it further on samsung devices you can customize how it works if i swipe and hold up i have auto rotation set to turn on or off if i swipe and hold down i have the quick panel so i can access my brightness my volume hotspot all these different functions i can customize that as well if i swipe and hold from the middle i have this actually that already and then the cool thing is also you can have different functions for different sizes of the screen so my regular swipes quick swipes will always be a back gesture i'll just leave it as that but then you know swipe and hold to do different things on the phone that's potentially like six different quick functions and different things that you can access on samsung device then i have it so that if i hold the power button take a screenshot you know you have the tap functionality as well just like iphones it's just very convenient very feature packed very easy to use when it comes to navigational stuff and then the keyboard like i showed you the clipboard is just super functional super convenient to have because they can copy like a hundred different things and they will all be in the clipboard and i can paste them where i need to paste them okay so now another thing that's inconvenient about ios you can't customize the keyboard on samsung devices you can customize the keyboard size and you can you can customize everything about the keyboard so i can customize the size can make it shorter taller you know i can make it more squished i can move where it is you can customize the comfortability of it you can customize the taps you can customize you know animations colors you can add even specific keys so let's say there's emoji you, you use a lot you can add that to the keyboard you can go crazy with the keyboard but the most important thing to me that you know ios does not have access to for some reason on iphones and this was a big thing when they added it to ipads specific size ipads not all ipads as well which is doesn't make sense to me is the number row you can't add the number row to your iphone keyboard number row is here on, on the samsung keyboard and androids in general you can customize to have the number row like bro like simple things like that i don't understand but now moving on to text editing like it's just more convenient on android i never have any real issues with this so for example let's say i want to go in between the seven and the four right here to you know add something there can't just tap it on ios i have to do this you gotta tap and hold then you gotta navigate to go there it might seem simple to you but at the same time it doesn't always work like that and you have to literally move the thing to go there on android let's say i want to go in between the three and the six i just tap it and it works let's say i want to go in between the six and the three on the left side i just tap it and it works wherever i want to tap it just works for me very easily so editing text is just so much faster on android for me let's say i want to select the text you know and select specific parts of it so i can tap and hold and select whatever i want to select very quickly it is a little bit finicky this is not the smoothest part of editing text on android and samsung devices but it works good enough for me on iPhone, you can't just tap and hold to select stuff because this happens. You got to double tap and then do the same thing. And then you can do the double tap as well on here. So I don't know everything that the iPhone can do, the Samsung device can do, but it has more options and more functionality. And like I said, just tapping to go in between specific parts of the text and edit it works so much easier and faster for me. And then numbers roll, you have so many different customizations you can do to the keyboard. iOS is just, you get what you get. Like it's kind of crazy. So now it's just dismiss. And even with dismissing the keyboard on iPhone, like it's kind of inconsistent on how to dismiss the keyboard. Like for this app, you can swipe down. But on Android, you can literally always back swipe and the keyboard will be gone. But honestly, there's so much more that I can talk about in terms of convenience. Like, for example, tapping and holding the app, it doesn't give you the option to go into the settings for that specific app. Whereas on, you know, Samsung devices, I can go into the information about the app, customize specific settings like the notifications, permissions, screen time, all that stuff. I can access it literally within two seconds just by tapping and holding the app. In addition to that, certain apps have the menu that you can use. Like, just small little things like that are just so much more convenient on Android. 
So yeah, I don't know about you guys, but every time I use the iPhone, bro, I feel so limited. I feel like I'm inconveniencing myself on purpose. So another thing that's inconvenient and annoying on iPhone is connecting accessories or external things. So, you know, this is an external SSD. And one of the new features that was introduced with the iPhone 15s was that you can connect SSDs to your iPhone while recording video and record directly onto the SSD. Super sick feature. I love that. And I love that you can now record, you know, 4K60 ProRes log straight to an SSD. That's so tough. But when you're speaking about convenience and how iPhone operates, you don't really have too much control over, you know, how these devices connect and stuff like that. So when you plug this in to the iPhone in the camera, like it'll tell you like, oh, if this storage can work or not, but it doesn't necessarily say tell you that this is connected it doesn't give you any options to select it. it doesn't give you options to choose to manually record to your phone storage or record to this like there's not really much control when it comes to using external things on the iphone like it, it's kind of just it functions the way that they want it to function and that's it you don't have really have any options obviously you can't do that on uh, samsung phones right now at this time but when you connect external devices to samsung devices you have so many options you can control how it functions you can control what you do on it and etc even just like as simple as ejecting these kind of uh, storage devices you can eject these devices manually on a Samsung device and, you know, honestly, Android devices in general. So yeah, it's cool that Apple added, you know, support for recording directly to this, but I wish there was more controls and, you know, just more visualization of what's going on when you connect the device to your iPhone. And then the other thing that is very inconvenient and annoying for me, this one is like probably one of my biggest pet peeves with iPhones is when you connect things like external mics. Like iPhones are compatible with external mics, especially with USB-C. You can connect so many different accessories, even like MIDI keyboards and stuff like that. But when you connect the external mic to the iPhone, it doesn't tell you anything or give you any information. Like you just saw when I connected it, it says unlock your phone to use this accessory. That's it. The mic is on and I know it's being powered by the iPhone and that's it. On iPhone, you don't have any controls for like, you know, choosing which device is going to be the audio device to actually pick up audio and you know record um when you record video with the external mic you can't control like so many different things and it also doesn't tell you that you're recording through the external mic so i'm in the camera app and i'm going to show you an example so if i start recording right now you see it's recording it doesn't tell me that i'm using the external mic for my audio source but i know that it's going to be recording through the external mic or honestly i don't know sometimes it's hit or miss there's been so many times where i'm trying to record audio with the external mic especially the wireless mics that i have and then you know i record a 40 minute long this is honestly my fault but i record a 40 minute long video and i find in the end that the iphone didn't pick up any audio from the mic or the, the audio was just completely silent didn't work so right now i have no idea if it's recording or not but now i just gotta end this and then go and check if i can start recording right now I'm so i'm pretty sure that it recorded with the mic so now i'm on my galaxy z Fold 6 and i'm going to show you the difference so if i go to video connect the external mic with the USB C adapter and then let's say i start recording just like that it tells you recording audio through usb mic boom and then Andrew, this is another feature that is inconvenient on iphone there is no manual controls when it comes to the camera but i go to pro video and then now you can control the mic that you're using so you can even adjust the built-in mics of the phone so you can make it record from the rear backside like mainly record that area or you can make it record from the front or omni like all around or you can choose to go usb and then if you're using like Bluetooth headphones or even a, a Bluetooth mic or something like that, you can set it to record from the Bluetooth mic. And you can also do a Bluetooth mix between, you know, Bluetooth and the built-in mics. And you can also even adjust the gain of the mic manually. This is something that is pretty cool on the Samsung device. So you have so many options and it also the, just the fact that the phone is telling you what's going on and it's, you know, showing you that you're recording through this mic makes it so much easier for your workflow. And for me specifically, like it's just less of a headache when I'm using external devices on my Samsung devices versus iPhones. Like iPhones phones are very dumbed down and it's a lot less of like telling you what's going on another inconvenient thing about iphone and i know you're probably tired of hearing that line but another inconvenient thing is connecting it to an external screen so when you connect an iphone to an external screen even though it can output you know a high resolution and even a high refresh rate it literally just does this you can only mirror your screen this is a touch screen that works with other devices like my samsung's and you know i can touch the screen and it will just work it functions but on iphone you can't use a touch screen and you can only mirror the screen you can't do anything with it even when you rotate the, the screen you know it fills up more of the screen but it's still very unusable on an external screen. On top of that, you don't really have too many options. Like when you're connected to the screen, it tells you, you know, audio source connected to the dock. That's it. You can't really adjust it at all. It just doesn't work like that. And then along these lines, like let's say you're somebody who wants to do a portable setup, use your iPhone as a computer. There's not like there is technically mouse support, but it's not real mouse support because you have to go into settings. You have to enable assistive touch, which is something that will stay on your screen after you disconnect the mouse. And like it's it's there, but it, it honestly barely functions. Like when the iPhone is in a certain orientation, the mouse is moving weird. When I'm in LumaFusion trying to, you know, edit in landscape just to test this out, it, the mouse like literally does not function. Honestly, I'm not even about to connect this again, but 
it literally just does not function well. It moves in weird directions and it just doesn't do what you want it to do. And then on the other side, not all Android phones work this well with external devices. I think Samsung's just do it the best. When you connect the Samsung flagship to an external screen, you have two options. You have screen mirroring, just like the iPhone, but a little bit better. I'm going to show you that. And the Samsung Dex. So first, I'm going to show you screen mirroring. So boom, you go to Smart View. And then this is the screen right here. I'm just going to connect to it. And then boom, it's mirrored just like the iPhone was. So you might be thinking like, oh, it's the same thing, but it's really not. Samsung software is very meticulous. There's so much detail, so many well thought out features and things. So like even just for simply mirroring your screen or connecting your phone to an external screen, Samsung has it thought out. So right here, you go to this menu, you can change the aspect ratio. So this is very important for me. So now I can go full screen on, on phone or full screen on connected device. Full screen on connected device changes it, how it looks on your phone. But when you rotate your phone, boom, now it takes the whole screen on the external device. So now going back to that Google Chrome example, you can literally get real work done. So this just works with Samsung um, Smart Share in general, like cast your phone screen to another device and you can actually like do stuff on it. And for specifically for watching media and stuff, you can watch media on external screen at full screen and it just looks way better than what the iPhone was doing. Even just mirroring is better because the customization and the, the features that Samsung has. So you can change the aspect ratio and then you can also pause it. So now it's paused. I'm using my phone. I don't want people to see what I'm doing. And then I can unpause it, obviously. And then you even got more options. So now you can hide notifications on the TV screen. I think the iPhone can also do that. And then you can also keep the phone screen on. You can go into labs. So this is very important. Allow all apps to be cast. So boom, you press that. You can also manually rotate the screen and then Chromecast support. So now this is very cool. So let's say I open up Google Chrome. So now what I can do do is cast only Google Chrome. So now Google Chrome is on the external screen and I can I can control it in this little floating window right here. I can even rotate my phone now back to you know vertical orientation. Continue using my phone. I can minimize Google Chrome. Continue using my phone normally while my phone is casting Google Chrome specifically to the external screen. And you know I can just I can go crazy. Like I can literally do whatever I want on that external screen within this little bubble right here. You can so like this is perfect for like let's say you're wanna you want to cast a video to watch with your friends or something like that. You can cast YouTube, Netflix, whatever, Disney Plus from your phone on the external screen while still using your phone normally as you would want to to text, respond to people, whatever it is. So the functionality is just so tough with Samsung phones and convenience. It's just there, man. Even for something as simple as connect to external screen. So now let's go into the other mode that I was talking about, Samsung DeX. When you connect the Samsung flagship with a USB-C cable, you can go into Samsung DeX. You don't have to use Samsung DeX, but like this is basically on a whole nother level. This is a desktop interface. So you can see the touchscreen works and now you can open apps and, and they open up in floating windows. So it's like as if you're using, you know, Mac OS or Windows and you can do whatever you want. You can open unlimited amounts of apps. So you can drag them to the side to snap them into different, you know, sizes and just it allows for quick multitasking. And like you can literally get real work done in this kind of setup on a Samsung device. And then the best part is you can watch videos, you can play games. The latency is good because it's connected with a wire right here. And you can also connect to up to 4K monitors. So you can have a 4K display coming from your Samsung device. It's just super cool. So, you know, you can do so many different things. You have your little calendar pop up, got your notifications, screenshot. You can even bring up the keyboard on your phone. And then the best part is if you don't have a mouse and keyboard, then you can use your phone for that. It can turn the screen into a trackpad. It works with gestures like you have three finger swipes, two finger swipes, pin to zoom in and out and there's so many more you could also open up the screen to have you know a bigger trackpad space on top of that too if you connect the external mouse then you can have the mouse flow between both screens and you can continue using your phone as you would normally you don't even have to adjust the aspect ratio of the phone to make it weird. You can just continue using it like you would watching videos, playing games, responding to text messages. And the external mouse can flow across both screens. So when you open up a Z Fold 6, it has a big display. Now you essentially have two displays. It's a two monitor setup, all from this phone. This phone is casting this and creating this. So let me just open up the internet browser to show you an example. You can resize the internet browser and you can literally just, you can do stuff, bro. Files app, you know, searching through the files app, doing different things on my phone. The thing I'm connected to right now is the UPerfect UDoc X Pro and it has different USB ports so I can connect like external devices, for example, SSD, a mic, whatever, connect it all to this and it will connect to the phone because this is kind of like a dock. So Samsung DeX just allows you to go hard. But yeah, I gave a lot of examples of why the iPhone is inconvenient. And I know a lot of them could be seen as power user things. Like, you know, a lot of people, your average user is not going to do these things. But hopefully I explained how the average user might actually use some of these features if they were available. Like, for example, cast into an external screen. A lot of average users actually cast their devices to external screens for different reasons. To share photos, videos, whatever. So, like, if iPhones were more convenient in those ways, I believe that the average user would use those features more often and, you know, honestly enjoy it more. 
So hopefully I explain them in a way where, you know, it makes sense for, you know, not just power users, but also average users. And hopefully people understand what I'm trying to say. I'm not knocking the iPhone. I think it's a really good device. I think it's powerful. There's a lot of potential with this hardware. Like the Apple always gets the hardware right, the built-in stuff, you know, how the phone feels, how powerful it is, like how the cameras work, all the potential of the hardware itself. But I feel like the software is often just not fully taking advantage of what Apple is creating. So hopefully in the future, we get so many more features and just like more convenient ways to do things like i feel like iphones always take like an extra step or two to accomplish the same things as androids and specifically samsung devices which i think are some of the most convenient devices when you talk about access to your phone how you use it customization all that stuff so you know i'm hoping that apple can lock in and just make the iphone more convenient lock in and fix that software make it nice and yeah i'm not trying to bash the iphone but it's just very frustrating when you're using a phone that costs two thousand dollars more than two thousand dollars in canada and it's called a pro phone you know has all these extra buttons but it can barely do much outside of like good cameras and you know good performance and video games so i just want more from the iphone that's it we out peace